Today's lesson is on energy flow. Previously, we talked about abiotic and biotic factors, non-living and living. All of these are important for an ecosystem. In fact, the sun is the main source of energy. Energy flows in one direction, from the sun to the producer. The arrows in our food chains and food webs we're going to talk about show the direction of energy flow. Arrows show the direction of energy flow. First, we have our producers, or autotrophs. They use sunlight and chemicals to produce their own food. We have two methods. We can use photosynthesis, which uses light energy. Plants and algae do photosynthesis. We also have chemosynthesis, which uses chemical energy. Bacteria in volcano vents do this method. Now we move on to our consumers, or our heterotrophs. Consumers must consume or eat other organisms. We have five different types of consumers. First, we have our herbivores. They eat only plants. Next, we have our carnivores. They only eat animals or meat. Third, we have our omnivores. They eat both plants and animals. Fourth, we have our detritivores. They eat plants and animal remains. And fifth, we have our decomposers. We talked about these last unit. They help break down organic matter. So now we're going to talk about how our energy flows from the producers to the consumers. We can show our energy flow a few different ways. First, we can use a food chain. This is steps showing how organisms are consumed. We start off with our sun, which is our main source of energy, and then our energy flows through our producers, our energy flows to our herbivores, our energy flows through our carnivores. Pay attention to the direction of the arrows. The arrows show how the energy moves, not what eats what. We can also show our energy flow through food webs. These link all of the food chains in an ecosystem. As you see here, there are a lot of different food chains connected together. In all of our food chains and food webs, which remember, they can be either on land or marine environment, so in the water. Each step of the food chain or food web starts with the producers. Each of our different levels are called trophic levels. Our first level will be our producers. In this example, there are plants or the phytoplankton. They have to do the photosynthesis. Then, our second level, we have our herbivores or our zooplankton. They eat only the plants. Our, in this example, our third, fourth, and fifth level are all carnivores. We have our secondary consumers, our tertiary consumers, and our quaternary consumers. Besides our food chains and food webs, we can also use pyramids to represent our energy flow. We have an energy pyramid which shows how energy is passed between the different trophic levels. Remember our produce producers, our herbivores, our carnivores. The important thing to remember, only 10% of the energy is passed on from each level. So if our producers have 1,000 kilograms of energy. Our herbivores only get 100 kilograms. 
Then, as we go up to our next level, our primary carnivores only now get 10 kilograms. And finally, our top carnivores only get 1 kilogram of the initial energy from the producers. So, as you can see, the fewer steps in the food chain there are, the more energy each level will get. Then we have a biomass pyramid. It shows us the potential food available. We can look at our numbers here and we can see how each level the amount of food increases. Our third pyramid is a pyramid of numbers. It's the number of animals at each level. The thing to remember about this pyramid is it doesn't always look like a normal triangle because as this one shows you it is based off of the initial oak tree which is very large compared to the caterpillars so there are more caterpillars that can live in this one tree then we go up to our blue tits and then our sparrow hawks so this one will show us the number of animals at each level 